In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and advice for how to become a bassoonist. So whether you're someone who has been interested in playing bassoon but haven't yet made the leap into playing the bassoon, or you recently started as a beginner and you're wondering how to start incorporating bassoon into your life, or maybe you're coming back to the bassoon after a long time off and you wanna start playing again. So stick around for my best advice for how to become a bassoonist. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Dr. Natalie Law and I'm a professional bassoonist and teacher and I love to help people just like you learn how to play bassoon and improve your skills at this instrument. If that is a topic of interest to you, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and make sure you check out some of my other videos that might help out your bassoon playing. So before I get into how exactly to become a bassoonist, I want to break down what exactly a bassoonist is or who exactly a bassoonist is. The standard, typical dictionary definition of a bassoonist is simply someone who plays the bassoon. But usually when we think of a bassoonist or a pianist or a guitarist or a clarinetist, we think of someone who plays that instrument regularly and over a sustained period of time. And so that's what I mean by becoming a bassoonist, someone who plays the bassoon with some level of regularity over a long period of time. And I will add to that someone who is interested in learning and improving their skills. I can tell you for me as someone who has been playing bassoon for a very long time and has three degrees in bassoon performance, I am still constantly learning and trying to improve my playing. So I think to be any type of bassoonist, no matter what level of player you are, I think it's important to have a growth mindset and always want to learn and improve your skills so that you can be a better musician. I am going to get into the logistical parts of becoming a bassoonist, what things you need to actually do to become a bassoonist. But before I do that, I want you to think about what is your BHAG. And if you've never heard of that acronym before, it stands for Big Hairy Audacious Goal. And I love this acronym because oftentimes when we think of our goals or what we want to do, we don't say them out loud or we're kind of afraid to say what we want to do because we don't want to be criticized. We don't want someone to tell us all the reasons we can't make that goal. Sometimes a big goal is kind of scary. So let's just embrace it for what it is. Let's have a big, hairy, audacious goal when it comes to bassoon. So in other words, if you could do anything with the bassoon, what would it be? Do you want to play in some sort of ensemble, maybe with a school or with a community ensemble, like a community band or community orchestra? Do you want to be able to play certain pieces of music? Uh, do you have a composer that you love that you really want to play their music? Do you have friends that you want to get together and play duets or trios or quartets with? Or do you want to be able to perform at your place of worship or for your friends and family around the holidays? Or do you want to become a professional bassoonist someday? Now that in itself is a whole other video topic. If that's something you're interested in, I can do go into that particular goal in more detail. But think about if there were no obstacles, what do you want to do with the bassoon? And I think it's really important to think about this when you're playing bassoon because it gives you your why. Why are you playing bassoon? Because there will be many days and many practice sessions where bassoon is really difficult and really frustrating and you don't want to play it and you're going to want to quit and you have to know what is your big hairy audacious goal? What do you want to do? Why are you doing this? So think about and write down what do you want to do with the bassoon? Once you have figured that out, move backwards and figure out what do I need to do right before that goal? What do I need to do before that? What do I need to do before that? What do I need to do before that? Until you get to where you are in your bassoon journey. And then you have your path laid out for you. And of course that path is not gonna be straightforward. It's not gonna be easy. Your interests might change. You might take a different direction, but at least start with the end in mind. Know where you want to go and why you're trying to get there. So let's jump into a little bit more of a logistical topic to becoming a bassoonist. You may not have an instrument right now, and if you do, just skip this section. You can move to another part in the video. But let's talk about how you can actually get an instrument. And this is really tricky because bassoons are expensive. They're sometimes difficult to rent. It can be quite a challenge to find an instrument. And so if you don't have one, you're going to need to look into either renting or possibly purchasing one. 
Now, in general, I don't recommend purchasing a bassoon right off the bat. If you can, rent one. There might be a school in your area. If you have any affiliation with a school, whether it be a middle or a high school or maybe even a college in your area, see if you can rent through a school. If you don't have any affiliation through a school, check with your local music stores and see if they rent bassoons. And if they don't have a bassoon readily available, are they able to order one in for you to rent or do they have suggestions for you to find a bassoon to rent? If none of those options work, try to find a, a bassoonist near you, preferably a professional bassoonist or a bassoon teacher who is in the area playing and they have probably have connections to places that might be able to rent you a bassoon. Or in some cases, there are some bassoonists who have a spare bassoon that they rent out. It's rare, but it is a possibility. So I recommend if you can't find a place to rent a bassoon from, try to get in touch with bassoon players, bassoon teachers in the area, and they likely know somebody or they have suggestions on how to find a bassoon to rent. You can also look at places online for renting bassoons. There are a number of double reed retailers that rent out bassoons that will ship it to you for a monthly fee. This is a little bit more expensive option than if you can find something locally, but it is an option. You can get bassoons shipped to you and do long-term rentals that way. Now, if you're thinking of buying a bassoon, which again, I recommend that you try to rent if at all possible, especially if you're just starting out. But if you do want to buy a bassoon, it is quite an investment and beginning bassoon models are often at least a couple thousand dollars. Um, more of an amateur model, you're looking anywhere from seven to $10,000 for an amateur model. And so it's pretty expensive, as you can see, to buy a bassoon. Even used lower quality bassoons are still pretty expensive. And if you see a bassoon listed for less than, I'd say, two to three thousand dollars, I would be highly suspicious of that bassoon. There's either something very wrong with it or it's a very poorly made brand. And I guarantee that if you get one of those bassoons and you make that investment in purchasing it, you're probably gonna be ending up paying a lot of more money in repairs and maintenance because they're poorly made. So just know that it's quite an investment if you're going to be purchasing a bassoon. So again, rent if at all possible. Talk to your local music stores, talk to your local schools, talk to any local bassoonists in the area. I will say if you've exhausted all of your local options, uh, you can always reach out to me and my email is down in the description you're welcome to email me um, and ask if I happen to have any connections because the bassoon community, uh, although we are spread out throughout the world, is actually quite small. And you know, I happen to know a lot of people in a lot of different areas. And if I don't necessarily know somebody directly in your area where you live, I might know somebody who knows somebody or I know somebody who's in the vicinity of where you live, or you know, I can, help guide you with that. So if you've exhausted all of your local options, feel free to reach out to me as a resource if you need help locating an instrument or some suggestions for finding something to rent. So once you actually have a bassoon, you have a bassoon in hand, there are a couple other things you need too, logistical things you need as well. You need reeds and you need some other accessories. So usually, especially if you're renting a bassoon, it usually does not come with a swab or a seat strap. You often have to purchase those uh, separately. I recommend buying a silk swab. You'll have to swab out two joints of your instrument, the boot joint and the wing joint. And if you wanna learn how to do that, you can check out my first bassoon lesson video and I go over that in that particular video. You also need a seat strap. Um, and you can purchase that online or in some music stores. I'll link down to the products that I would recommend purchasing for seat straps and swabs if you need to purchase them online. You also need reeds, and I would recommend that at any given time to have two to three reeds that are playable and ready to go and that you're rotating through those reeds. Now you can buy reeds at local music stores um, that are pretty cheap, comparative to other types of reeds. 
Um, but these reeds that are sort of mass produced, they're not made by specific bassoonists. Um, they often are poor quality and you struggle a lot. Sometimes you have trouble just making basic sounds on the instrument if you're not playing on a good quality reed. So find a professional bassoonist and order reeds from them. I'll link down to where you can purchase my reeds below if you want to try out those, but there's lots of places online where bassoonists are selling their reeds and you can try out different reeds, but have two to three reeds at any given time, ready to rotate, ready to go on your bassoon. So in order to become a bassoonist, you have acquired a, an instrument, you've acquired reeds and the other supplies that you need to be able to play bassoon and you have your big hairy audacious goal of what you wanna do, now what? <laughs> so just because you have a bassoon and some supplies doesn't necessarily mean that you can play it. So how do you get started actually learning bassoon? The best way to learn bassoon, no matter what your level is, is to take regular private lessons. And usually we try to do weekly private lessons, but even if you aren't able to do weekly, if you can do bi-weekly or monthly lessons with a private teacher, that's better than nothing at all. Um, a teacher will be able to guide you through the process of learning the bassoon. They'll be able to provide you immediate feedback. They'll pro provide you specific things to work on. They'll give you resources and, and exercises and books and things that you need to do to be able to play bassoon. And so in order to find a bassoon teacher, the same places that you might have reached out to try and find a bassoon might be good resources to find a teacher as well if you're looking for local in-person lessons with someone. So reaching out to your local music store, reaching out to your local schools, trying to find someone in the area. If you have trouble finding someone in your area or for some reason that doesn't work out, you can take online virtual lessons with someone like me. I'll link to, down to where you can purchase a lesson with me, and you're welcome to email me if you're interested in taking lessons with me or even just one or two lessons. Um, you can ask me questions about how that works or how to get that set up or what to expect and all of those things. But taking lessons is probably the fastest and best way to learn bassoon, no matter what your level is. So maybe taking lessons might be a little bit intimidating or ongoing private lessons is just too much of a financial obstacle for you to take. I recommend you check out my online beginning bassoon course, Bassoon Jumpstart, which I created just for people like you if you're just starting out on bassoon. It's an online video course, videos of me teaching things on the bassoon exactly the way that I do in private lessons. And it's step by step. It starts from the very beginning, day one, goes through all of the fundamentals and basic skills and concepts that you need to get started on bassoon. And there's supplemental exercises and songs included in the course that help you learn as well and you can go at your own pace and that is another option to getting started on the bassoon to give you that boost or that jump start uh, that you might need to get started so check that out if lessons are a possibility so you have your big hairy audacious goal you have your bassoon you have your reeds your supplies you have a way to start learning bassoon whether it be through lessons or an online course but now you need a way to incorporate bassoon in your everyday life so bassoon, just like anything else, it takes up time, it's an investment, and you want to be able to keep up with it. You know, it's it's not something that you're just all of a sudden going to start practicing every day because you just want to and, and all of that. You'll have your motivation, you have your BHAG, your why, why you want to do this, but getting that daily motivation to practice, that takes a little bit something else. What I recommend is to plan out in advance when you're gonna practice. Whether you have weekly practice times throughout the week, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday from five to 6 p.m. is your practice time, and that's your standing practice time on the bassoon. Just like if you had a rehearsal or if you had a sports practice, you have a standing practice time every week. That's one way to do it. Or if your schedule is completely crazy and changing all the time like mine, you go week by week in advance and put in the times in your calendar when you're gonna practice. I know for me, if something is not on my calendar, I won't do it. So I have, even practicing for me, I have to specifically block out time and reserve that time for only practicing when I need to practice. 
So I recommend you do the same thing. Figure out when you're gonna practice, how much you're gonna practice. And remember, if you're just starting out on bassoon or just returning to it after a long time off, you're gonna have to start slow and just do small chunks of time and then eventually build up to it a longer period of time. So you may only have like a 10 minute practice session here and there, and that's completely normal right at the start. So I recommend um, doing a practice log. Um, I do have a practice log that I created that I have used for many years, and I find it really helpful for organizing practicing, especially when you have a lot of different things that you wanna work on, and you need to organize how much time you're working on them and how much emphasis everything is getting and to actually document your progress over time. So I'll link down below to a practice log that I use and I encourage my students to use for planning and documenting your practice. And that way you can physically see on paper or on a screen your progress over time. Now in these practice sessions, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on what exactly you need to practice all the time because that's a whole other you know, video topic in and of itself. Um, but I do recommend that you have a fundamentals warm up period in your practice. And it doesn't matter what level of player you are, doing some sort of skill practice, long tone practice, tonguing practice, basic stuff, even if it's just for a few minutes at the beginning of your practice session to sort of warm you up for the rest of your practice session and then have some exercises or books that you're working out of. And again, if you're taking lessons or if you're in my course, your teacher or that course is going to give you material to work on to practice in addition to your fundamental skills. So fundamental warm-up type skills at the beginning of every practice session and then get into the other things that you're being given to work on and that will help you sort of structure your practice sessions and make sure that you're not just sort of randomly playing whatever comes to mind. So I've talked about kind of all the basic things you need to get started to become a bassoonist and things you need to think about, but I also wanna address how to deal with the bassoon when it gets difficult, when it gets difficult to play and you have practice sessions that don't go well or you have um, reads that don't work very well or you're not achieving things as quickly as you'd like to, or things just aren't going the way that you want them to go. Because I guarantee that you will have those days and those times where you just wanna give up the bassoon, it's so frustrating and overwhelming, and you wanna put it away. So I recommend that if you are in a practice session and you're getting really frustrated, if you've gotten to that point mentally, just put the bassoon away, take a break, come back to it tomorrow because if you've reached that sort of mental frustrated point in your practicing, you're, you're just going to get diminishing returns because you're not in the right mental state. Try to approach learning the bassoon with a really curious growth mindset, knowing that you're going to make mistakes, things aren't going to work well, it's not going to go as planned, and it's going to be difficult. I think it goes back to that saying that anything worth doing or having in life takes a lot of work. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would play bassoon. At least I would like to think that everybody would play the bassoon if they could. But in, in essence, it's not, it's not easy. No one ever said it was going to be easy. So just be patient with yourself. Try to have a curious growth mindset as you're practicing. And when you reach that frustrating point, put the bassoon away, pick it up tomorrow. And that's one reason, a nice thing about having a teacher is that you know when you're having a difficult week or a difficult you know couple practice sessions, you can go to the teacher and say, "Hey, I'm really struggling with this. Something's not clicking for me. Can you help me?" And the teacher, if they're a good teacher, they'll say, "Okay, well let's let's talk about it and let's figure out what's going on. Maybe there's something going on in your playing that you're not quite aware of, and having someone point that out to you." is helpful and it helps you overcome those obstacles. I hope this video was helpful for you in giving you sort of a broad overview in how to become a bassoonist so that you can start incorporating bassoon playing into your life. You're more than just the definition of someone who plays the bassoon, but you're someone who plays the bassoon regularly over a long period of time and you're constantly trying to learn and grow and that's what makes you a bassoonist. Doesn't matter what level you are or what your background is, that's what, you know, it just, that's what it takes. Playing regularly, playing over a long period of time and having a growth mindset of trying to learn and always be better and improve your skills 
And that is what helps you become a bassoonist. So tell me down in the comments, what is your BHAG? What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? What is your why? Why are you playing bassoon? What makes you want to play this instrument and want to get better at it? 